we're going to do today is we're going to talk about an enzyme called cellulase and how we're going to talk about how this enzyme can actually make biofuels such as ethanol. And in the process, we're going to talk about lots of concepts that have come up during HSC chemistry and bio. So it should be quite interesting to, to see how one story can relate to four or five concepts. Now, what we need to know is we need to know that cellulase can be enzyme, the enzyme here, this is the enzyme, the one in blue. This can be found in something called a marine wood borer. And this is a creature right here. And this creature uses those enzymes to break down wood and to digest wood. So this wood can be found, for example, on shipwreck, and you can see how many holes it has. That would have come from the um, creature eating basically the wood and uses this enzyme to do so. But we've isolated the enzyme because we can use that enzyme to, for example, break down cellulose, which is its um, substrate, and it breaks it down into its uh, monomers. So cellulose is a polymer. We've covered that before. You can see how they, the actual enzyme here breaks down that polymer, and what will happen is it will break it down into glucose. And that glucose we can then use to make ethanol from fermentation. So what we're going to talk about in this story is how the whole process works, how we can make ethanol from the idea of using this enzyme, how much biofuel, so how much ethanol we could theoretically make, and why we should care about that whole process. And this is where a new story came from. So it says enzymes from eating uh, wood eating gribble, which is this part here, could help turn waste into biofuel. So how do we make plenty of ethanol from cellulose? The first step is to make plenty of cellulase. Remember, this was the enzyme that will break down cellulose to produce glucose. And this enzyme we can make by find the gene in that wood borer, the picture I showed you earlier. That gene will code for the enzyme. And what we can do then is we can insert the gene into a bacteria and that bacteria will produce us plenty of cellulase. Remember, that's what we call it, produce, producing a transgenic species, because this bacteria originally was unmodified. What we do is we take out its plasmid, which is a bunch of DNA. We add the cellulase gene, so this here is the gene. We add it into the DNA uh, of that plasmid, and then return the plasmid to the bacteria. Now this bacteria is called a transgenic bacteria because it's going to have DNA from two different species, that, that additional gene that it didn't have beforehand. And what that bacteria will do then is it's going to reproduce like it always does. In this case, it's called binary fission. That's something similar to mitosis. And all those uh, duplicates, all of those new bacteria, will have that same gene to produce cellulase. And what they're going to do is they're going to produce plenty of that enzyme cellulase. Right, so we're going to end up with lots of cellulase. And what are we going to do with that cellulase? We're going to break down cellulose. Right? So that's the first step. We're going to want to make sure we produce a transgenic species to make us cellulase. Um, and then we start the whole process. So the first part is we start with a raw material. So for example, straw, paper, or scrap wood. And they all have plenty of cellulose in them. So cellulose is that building block we have at the beginning. We want to break that down. Uh, we just pre-treat it. That's just called, basically, that's crushing. Um, then we go to the next step, and this is the important step. So what we have now is we have cellulose in this step three here. And this step is basically the step right here. So we're going to have uh, plenty of seawater. And in that seawater, we're going to have the cellulose polymer swimming in it, right? We're going to add the cellulase, so it's called cellulase, right? These red dots are meant to be the enzyme that we just produced earlier. We're going to add them into the water. And what they're going to do is they're going to produce this reaction right here. So remember cellulose, the polymer cellulose, are just lots of glucose monomers added together through condensation reactions, right? So they're called, cellulose is called a condensation polymer. But what we're going to do is what cellulose, cellulase, the enzyme does, this is the enzyme right here, what it will do is basically break off one of those bonds, it'll add water into the bond, thereby breaking it off, and it will make it back into its monomer, right? So this is the monomer, and this is glucose. So now we have removed a monomer of glucose from the cellulose, and that's what we have cellulase there for, right? This is, this is what the red dot was meant to represent, represent cellulase. Um, and the reason why we need glucose is because that will bring us to the fourth step, where after distillation and fermentation, right? and fermentation was the idea where you start with glucose and you basically end up having carbon dioxide and two moles of ethanol for every glucose we started with. So now we have ethanol. And this ethanol, so we end up with ethanol. This ethanol is a biofuel. And that's why we did this whole procedure for. Last question would be, what does it all mean? Why do we do this? Why do we try to produce uh, ethanol from biomass such as straw, paper, or scrap wood? Well, usually ethanol gets produced from, for example, corn or other different types of uh, crop that actually need land to grow, which can take away from our food supply. In this case, we're using waste scraps, straw or scrap wood, to produce ethanol. Right? So that gives us biofuels from different sources. That's why we're doing it. 
the next question would be, could that end our fuel crisis? Could we make enough biofuel from this technique to supply all of our cars? And the answer probably would be no. Uh, we need to have different sources as well to actually supply every single car that we drive, but it could add a few more of, uh, liters of fuel into our uh, supply. So would there be any limitations to this technique? So obviously we said that it probably wouldn't supply enough fuel for the whole world. That would be one limitation. But also that this is whole thing is experimental. It's done on a relatively small scale at the moment. So if we want to show that we can, not, it can be used for industry, we need to ramp it up for the bigger scale to be used as holding thing on a very big scale. And that's something that probably be done in the next couple of years to see if it's possible. Right? But this technology overall, hopefully this was a bit interesting to show you how uh, different concepts in biochemistry come up in news every day. And that this kind of technology is relatively possible and hopefully will help a bit as well.